fact that these sanctuaries have been removed without any consultation to the community, uh, to the scientific community, to the Batemans Marine Park Advisory Body, it seems like a bastardisation of democracy. If the public aren't involved in these decisions, then why are they being made and whose interests are they really serving? Recreational fishing has just been allowed within the sanctuaries at Montague Island and when we allow and open up these spaces to recreational fishing we're actually doing damage to the protections we've already had in place. Those ecosystems out there are thriving, they're healthy and we're looking towards the future. As soon as we open them up we're undoing the work that we've done and these populations are going to be in decline. My name's Wally Stewart. I'm born and bred in Narema. I'm a Yuan man, part of the Yuan Nation, Walbunja um, man. Grew up here, um, just around the corner over there. Um, parents bought a house here in 1958 before Aboriginal people were actually allowed to live in town. And um, we've been here ever since. I'm also a claimant for the far south coast native title claim. Our Yuan people are very passionate about the waters. There's, there's, um, not a lot of groups in, in Australia that are so passionate like the Yuan people that's been recognised, you know. You don't have to look far, you can go on any point on the south coast and you'll see midden sites that are thousands of years old. The coast is littered with these uh, estuaries which are full and teeming with life and then the coastline and offshore itself is, it's just an absolute abundance of the natural world. It's, it makes me feel really heartened that, um, that despite all the bad news about the state of the world that I can go out in the water here and I can see turtles and dolphins and seals and sharks and fish and you know tiny little bait fish and seagulls in the sky and stingrays underneath you know underneath your board it's it really is the kind of place where you feel privileged to be alive. Montague Island is a haven for so many different species. We have Australian and New Zealand fur seals that have their colony out there. There's crested terns, white-bellied sea eagles. And today we've seen humpback whales playing around the island. Orcas come in. We've got lots of tropical fish and lots of other fish species like gropers and flatheads out there. Grainer sharks make their home around Montague Island. And quite often we get green sea turtles as well. Over here, you've, the other side there, you, you've got a beach, you've got uh, reefs, shallow and deep, you've got offshore islands, we've got uh, estuaries, we've got open ocean bays, all these different kinds of habitats, and each of them tends to support a different suite of marine life. Marine sanctuaries are so important for marine biodiversity, and particularly fishes. The safe haven, the safe space in which they can grow larger, reproduce, has amazing benefits and this has been shown through numerous studies worldwide and in Australia. Marine sanctuaries benefit fishers in a number of ways. Firstly, by allowing fish to grow larger and have more babies, they provide an area for spillover, for the larvae to make it outside these marine parks and populate the nearby fished areas. This has been shown incontrovertibly in the last few years. Secondly, the big fish themselves, even though many of them have a smallish home range, eventually they diffuse out of marine parks to be caught. 
The science behind the benefit of marine sanctuaries is enormous, vast and, and, and comprehensive. In our state, for instance, a number of world-leading studies have been done showing that within these even small marine parks, great benefits to fishers and fisheries uh, accrue. Every year, we will take thousands of tourists out to Montague Island to specifically see what the Batemans Marine Park has to offer. Since we've started our business over here, so since we've started underwater safaris, we've noticed a major change, a major shift in, uh, in um, I suppose, opportunities, business opportunities for, uh, for tour operators. Uh, most of the businesses did fishing charters uh, solely, um, and a lot of them have now uh, branched out into doing snorkeling with seals uh, and as well as scuba diving, because they've seen the potential financial opportunities that that has to offer. I'm an oyster farmer in Wagonga Inlet, a third generation farmer. Uh, my grandfather was down here. Marine sanctuaries on this inlet, uh, I consider them really important. It doesn't affect oyster farming, like this taking away the, 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 the sanctuary zones, doesn't affect oyster farming, uh, you say, immediately. It's a, more of a long term thing because it, it allows access again for people to these huge ribbon weed areas that were part of the no take zones. So that means you've got the outboards running through, people throwing their anchors over the side and dragging those through the ribbon weed. As a consequence, you have a loss of fish habitat and a loss of water quality, which has been the driving force behind the down and slide in production of Sydney Rock oysters for the last 50 years. A lot of people come from Sydney, Melbourne and Canberra to see the beautiful nature of the South Coast. They come swimming with the seals, they go fishing, kayaking, they go bushwalking. They're coming here to see nature. And that's great for our business too, because they stop off and have an ice cream and they grab a coffee and they stay in the accommodation. Since the Marine Park was established in 2007, we've seen an increase in tourism, an increase in visitation numbers, coming to experience the beautiful Marine Park, including the marine sanctuaries. A lot of our tours travel in the sanctuary zones, like this one here today. We're visiting the Burrawarra Point Sanctuary Zone. For us, the sanctuary zones form a big part of education for our guests. The sanctuaries are a varied environment throughout the marine park, and for us, they're very important because they do ensure that we have an ecosystem for the future. So the marine sanctuaries are important to me as a fisher person because I like catching fish. <laughs> I've got two young kids, I want them to be able to catch fish. I want their kids to be able to catch fish. And to me, it makes sense that we protect small little pockets that enable the fish to, to breed in safety and to expand their numbers naturally. There's so much coast down here, there's so much good fishing. Why does it matter if we just protect a couple of little pockets so the fish can, can breed up to, to good numbers? Recently, recreational fishing has been opened up in six sanctuary zones in the Batemans Marine Park. The big problem with that is you can get a rapid fish down of the stocks within those. Now, if, for instance, someone sees the error of their ways and decides to reinstate those zones, it'll take years and years and years to build up that fish capital that was there beforehand. The, the, the changes to fishing in this area over time, it, it's it's like death by a thousand cuts. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes years. It takes us a long time to bugger up a waterway, but we can do it. We've got the technology to do it. If we don't have the will to try and save some of these or protect some of these waterways, we will lose them forever. The ocean has always been really, really important to me, but it's also really important to our business as well and all the stakeholders down here. Nature is our business. And back in December when six of those marine sanctuaries were opened up without public consultation, without discussion with people who own businesses and all the different stakeholders, it was really disappointing because they are very, very important for the South Coast. When I found out they were removing sanctuary zones, I was absolutely gobsmacked. I wrote straight away to the, the local member complaining about what they'd done because there'd been no consultation with anybody, including the staff at the Marine Park or the uh, members of the committee. Uh, so no one had any idea this was coming, they were completely blindsided. Opening more of the Marine Park to fishing is absolute rubbish. Lots of fishermen 
uh, understand the importance of sanctuary zones and would argue that they actually have plenty of water to fish in. So the idea of scrapping sanctuary zones is absolute rubbish and a step backwards for our future. I suppose coming from South Africa, where, where I've seen fisheries fall apart because of the lack of protection, we are basically on the precipice and we have the ability to change that right now. There's plenty of blue water out there for everybody to fish on, you know what I mean? Uh, when we found out that they opened the sanctuary zones uh, to wreck fishing, uh, we found it very disappointing because they're a major benefit and a draw card for tourism uh, in this town as well, uh, that everybody benefits uh, from them. Why was this done? The reason has never been explained. There was no scientific studies to suggest there was any reason to open them up. There was no environmental impact statement to see whether it would uh, ha have a harmful effect. Unfortunately, even though the law prescribes that there should be a period of public consultation before these decisions are made, the government got around that. So we end up with six sanctuary zones here, opened up to recreational fishing and experiencing the uh, impacts that that involves. And so it's a, it's a rather sad day, uh, but we are still hopeful that the government will see reason here and will restore these sanctuaries, and that's the focus of our campaign. Bateman's Marine Park, you know, falls under the native title claim area. You know, the whole south coast is, you know, our claim goes three nautical miles out to sea, you know. So we we're pretty disappointed. When they opened up their sanctuary zones, just taking food away from our people as well, because we were allowed to access them sanctuary zones. When they took them away, um, we wrote a letter to the minister in regards to, you know, we were disappointed that you never came and consulted with us because you know, we, our native title's registered now, and you have a right, you know, under the, under the law, under the Native Title Act, to come and talk to us uh, about things like that. So, so, we were, so one, we were disappointed that they've taken away without discussing us, and two, you know, we're conservationists too, and we want to look after our water, and we see Century Zones as a, as a good, good thing. There's opportunities there now for, you know, all government, you know, all state government, you know, local size, DPI to come and talk to us now and come up with a real solid, you know, plan to basically look after our, um, you know, especially our waters. And it's about time that they start recognising our rights and let us have a say in management or let us manage these waters. So if if we can get them to a table, you know, which we've been trying for 250 years, I suppose, um, and sit down, there could be a win there for everybody. Very often with anything to do with the ocean, people don't see what's beneath. They look at the surface of the water and everything looks fine, but underneath things can be quite different. It comes over time and it takes a long time to destroy it, but ultimately we will. And the, the sanctuary zones from my point of view were as one of the few things we can do to try and help repair some of the damage that we've already done, if it's not too late. When I'm older, and when my kids are older, I would like to make sure that there are plenty of fish for them to see, and uh, for them to be able to enjoy the same activities, or possibly take over my business, I don't know. Um, but definitely, uh, on the track that we're taking right now, um, it's not looking promising. The truth of the matter is that we need the ocean to survive, right? and it needs us to protect it. My name's Paul West. I live in Bermagui on Ewan Country. I'm an ABC broadcaster, a fish for food, and I support marine sanctuaries. My name is Fiona McHughie. I live in Badala. We own the Badala Dairy Shed, and I support marine sanctuaries. My name's Brian Coxon. I'm an oyster farmer from Naruma, and I support marine sanctuaries. I'm Bill Barker from Potato Point on the south coast of New South Wales, and I support marine sanctuaries. My name's Josh Waterson. I'm an eco-tour operator on the south coast of New South Wales, and I support marine sanctuaries. My name's Dave Booth. I'm a fish ecologist at the University of Technology, Sydney, and I support marine sanctuaries. My name's Francois Fonsale. I'm a dive boat operator in Naruma, New South Wales, 
and I support marine sanctuaries. I'm Laura Wells, science communicator and environmentalist from Sydney, and I support marine sanctuaries. The marine sanctuaries in the Batemans Marine Park are being threatened. Help us to save the Batemans Marine Sanctuaries.